the program today with the International Real Estate Congress, and Deborah gets to do the introduction. I know your favorite. He knows he's one of my all-time favorites. I'll tell you, the first time Lawrence Yoon, who's the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors, attended our um, International Real Estate Congress, I was absolutely blown away. I'm a statistics junkie, I, I admit it. But I was snapping photos of every screen that he was posting up there. And since then, I've been an avid fan. Every one of you are going to become an avid fan of Dr. Lawrence Yoon. Please welcome the Chief Economist of the National Association of Realtors. Uh, thank you. Um, very great to be here. I think this is my fourth or fifth straight year coming here to Miami. Uh, and always a pleasure uh, in November. <laughs> Even in summertime is great. Uh, and, and now that the market is in a, looks to be a very sustained, solid recovery, uh, it's never been a better time to consider uh, real estate here in the uh, Miami or the Florida region. Uh, yesterday, interestingly, uh, the uh, British paper, uh, Daily Telegraph, uh, had a story about where to invest money in property around the world. It mentioned Portugal as a potential good spot. It mentioned France. It mentioned Estonia, uh, the former Soviet Republic, uh, right next to Finland. Uh, it mentioned uh, Britain. In South America, Brazil was mentioned as possible, a good investment. It lists the top 20 spots. Um, and the number one destination, according to Daily Telegraph, is the United States, saying that it is a safe, reliable. Mm -hmm. It's a little strange. You can, you can push back and it goes forward, mm -hmm. or you can push the middle and it goes forward. I don't go backwards. I think I will be okay. <laughs> um, uh, so the United States came in on the top, uh, and the reasoning was that it's always safe and reliable. You never have to worry once you purchase a property here in the U.S. that is yours. Uh, and furthermore, given that the market appears to this giant, uh, this giant United States is beginning to uh, wake up, uh, this wake-up stage will be a long process, and, and actual data actually shows that the U.S. is in a prime position for a continued recovery. So let's see uh, what we have seen so far um, in the U.S. market. It's been a two years of a good recovery. Uh, when I say two years of recovery, it means the transaction activity after a severe downturn, it was a severe uh, downturn, uh, has shown a buyers that came, came into the market for two consecutive years. Uh, now we are beginning to see some topping out in the sales activity, no real growth, but I believe that this is a temporary pause, but also it will depend upon various localities. It will be job driven. In the areas where it is creating jobs, they are in much better position. Uh, but uh, there are some factors that is beginning to hold back sales. When I say hold back, it does not mean decline. Last year was good activity. This year was even better. People are happy about this year's activity. Next year will be about the same as this year in terms of sales activity, which means another good year, even though it, will, it may not be uh, necessarily an increase. The new home construction sector, uh, I believe, is prime for a very solid uh, double-digit percentage gain, uh, possibly 20%. Uh, I would not be surprised if it moves up even 30% in terms of new home construction uh, activity and sales, uh, because there is a shortage of newly constructed buildings, and the demand in relation to the supply, uh, I think, would imply that the, uh, the, the new home construction uh, would do well. Uh, and there is a significant local market variation. So let me go to uh, some of the uh, slides. Um, and before going, uh, I know that some of you would like to take uh, uh, pictures of this, and you are welcome. Um, but the whole presentation would be available to the audience in, in the electronic format uh, in some way, yeah. So, so on the website. So just in case you miss a slide or so, you, know, you do not have to panic. Uh, it's all available uh, to you. 
Um, the pending contract, so this is the signing of the, the contract to buy a home. And what one sees is that there was a bubble activity. Uh, in hindsight, it was clearly uh, exuberant. People came into the market uh, even without any qualification. Uh, they were able to get a mortgage uh, without any showing of any income documentation. Uh, it was a bubble. After a bubble, it was a sharp crash. And after the crash, it was just bouncing along the bottom for a while. And then there was the stimulus measure, uh, $8,000 given to home buyers to say, buy a home, we give you $8,000. Uh, it was led by NAR uh, in trying to push this measure. It got passed, and then it helped to bring some of the buyers back into the market. Then after the tax credit disappeared, and we thought that it should disappear because now the economy was beginning to recover, we said let the natural market forces uh, be at work. That is to say, job creation, uh, interest rate, let those factors be the drivers of home sales, and steadily we have seen, and now uh, recent peak activity was even higher than with the tax credit. So the natural forces with job creation was even better than even with the tax credit activity. But note the past four months, we are beginning to show some weakness, but again, compared to what it had been, it is still very, very elevated activity. Because buyers have come back, the inventory level has fallen and fallen and fallen. Existing home inventory is right now essentially at a 13-year low levels. As we go into the winter months, uh, we anticipate that even fewer uh, listing activity uh, going on, uh, particularly in the northern states, because people don't list their home in the snow. Uh, so we anticipate to go down uh, through the winter months essentially at 13-year low levels. Newly constructed home inventory is even lower, 50-year low inventories. All of you are very smart. When there is a shortage of inventory, you know you can anticipate that whatever you are buying, the prices will be rising over time. And, and that would be, the, uh, in essence, uh, the forecast. Uh, but the inventory level is down, down, and down. And the question is, when will it turn up? So far, it's refusing to turn up. Some people mention that maybe the shadow inventory, not the visible inventory, but the invisible inventory is out there. Those homes that is not yet for sale because it is not on the market, but it will surely come onto the market because the homeowners are under tremendous distress. They have not been paying their mortgages for six months, one year, in some cases for two years, uh, and, and this property will surely come onto the market. I would say the following. First, the level of distress has begun to diminish. One can see some decline in the diminishing activity of shadow inventory or seriously delinquent mortgages. Furthermore, many of the delinquent borrowers now are seeing job creation. So now they are in a little better position to pay their mortgages. So steadily, this will begin to decline. I show two charts, one, the US, Florida was the ground zero for the disaster. So it was the highest uh, in terms of mortgage delinquency, but now one can see that uh, it's coming down to about 12, 13 uh, percent. So it is higher than the U.S., but the progress is being made in the Florida market. Inventory levels are low. And way to add more inventory is for the new home constructions to come alive. So this is the level of new housing starts, new construction. Horizontal line is the long-term historical average based on the population growth in the US. America needs to add about 1.5 million new homes. America is one of the unique countries among advanced economies. Other advanced economies are seeing topping out in population. Japan, population is declining. Germany, probably beginning to decline. Italy is declining. Uh, Britain and France, very slow population increase. America is one of the few advanced in the, uh, economies with a uh, respectable population growth of three million each year. And based on that, we need one and a half million. Now, some of the emerging economies, whether China, India, Brazil, 
uh, yeah, they are still seeing very solid uh, population growth, so there needs to be more uh, housing construction in these countries. But the U.S. is among the few advanced economies that still need uh, healthy housing construction. And what we have seen is that it is well below the long-term average. And it is below the long-term average even as we have inventory shortage. And what is going on here? When there is a shortage of inventory, isn't that the case that the suppliers produce more to satisfy the inventory? And the home builders want to build more. They're seeing more, they're purchasing more vacant lots. So land activity has risen. But the problem is that many of the home builders are having difficulty obtaining construction loans to build homes. In other words, there are some regulatory changes that makes it more difficult for the lenders to lend for construction loans, and hence the builders are being hampered from building more because of some uh, financial regulations, which means that we have inventory shortage today. We will continue to have inventory shortage next year, even if this thing increases a bit, because it needs to increase all the way up to the, blue, the horizontal line, and there's no prospect that it will increase to that level next year. Therefore, housing shortage is nearly guaranteed going into next year. Housing shortage means that prices will continue to rise because as long as there are buyers uh, and we have shortage of inventory, the supply and demand dynamics would imply that prices has to uh, rise. Uh, the prices condition right now is that in the Miami market, prices are rising. There is uh, already an inventory shortage, uh, and this data uh, it shows that there's not all markets are equal. So Charlotte, North Carolina, for example, Charlotte did not experience the massive bubble of the Miami market. Um, then it started to decline somewhat, but now it's stabilizing, but Miami has already turned upwards. And in fact, this is the repeat price index, uh, but if one looks at the median price, which generally appears to be an early leading indicator of the repeat price index, uh, the median prices are up solidly from uh, a couple of years ago. Compared to two years ago and, and today, Miami prices are up uh, close to 30% from the low point, from the median prices. So people who have been buying property the past couple of years in Miami, uh, they have done well. They are saying, I'm seeing equity gains right away. And this increase is probably going to continue just because we have a housing shortage situation. Um, the new home prices are rising a little faster than existing home prices. And because new home prices have to factor in all the construction costs, payment for coppers, uh, the lumber, uh, the construction wages. So based on that, and also they have to add a profit margin, uh, the blue line, which is the new home price, this is what they have to charge. They will not produce a home if they are going to lose money. They have to have some profit, which means that the red line, which are some existing properties, still has more room to catch up compared to historical uh, premium differences. So in other words, new home prices will be determined by material costs, and given the inventory shortage, probably profit margin can be a little higher, provided they can obtain construction loans. But many of the existing property, uh, there's more room to rise because uh, the gap has really opened up and only way to fill the gap is for the existing prices to rise. Household formation in the meantime is beginning to burst out. Household formation is, one can view it as a family or a single person living uh, by uh, him or herself. Based on the population growth in the U.S., which I mentioned, about 3 million additional people in the U.S., uh, we have about 1 million household formation each year. Then during the re downturn, it been it's been collapsed. And this is the situation where many of you have already heard of, many young adults living with their parents. So if the young adults or recent college graduates are going back to live with their parents, it's not creating a housing demand. It's not creating housing demand. What is unusual about this collapse in household formation is that, first, look at the other time period. One do not see this collapse. And second, it is a prolonged collapse, five consecutive years. Not one or two years, five consecutive years. When I looked at the data before 1980, I could not find any other period where we had this suppression of household formation for prolonged period. 
Only time was probably during the Great Depression. I mean, there was no data at that time, but during the Great Depression, it was likely. So what this means is that this needs to pop out, and once it began to pop out, it began to pop out last year. It's continuing this year, which is the reason for the housing recovery. But given it was a five-year suppression, it is likely to be at least five years bursting out in household formation creating that housing demand situation. Housing demand increases for the next five years, provided uh, there is a job creation. Uh, Wall Street Journal takes a survey of economists on the price projections. It's about 50 economists. I participate. Uh, and every economist have their different economic models. Some people believe interest rates are more important. Other economists believe that uh, the job creations are important, or various other factors. So every economist have different models, but you average all of the economists' forecasts together to get an average, to get a consensus, and what economists are saying is that next year it will be about 5% price growth nationwide. Some local market will do better than others, and clearly Miami, where there is a more acute inventory shortage, uh, is probably primed for even better than 5% price growth. Uh, compared to uh, next year. And also, this may be the reason why Daily Telegraph, the British paper, yesterday when they said U.S. is the number one place for uh, investment, maybe they were looking at uh, stories like this where they believe that prices will be rising and one do not have to, uh, in, in essence, not take a risk because you know that prices are rising. In the meantime, the economy is expanding. We are out of the recession. Uh, fortunately, I think Europe is finally coming out of the recession. So finally, uh, uh, Europe is coming out of the recession. Um, but the U.S. has been out of the recession for the past three, four years. So U.S. has been doing better than um, uh, European countries on, in general. Uh, but it's not a robust expansion. So, so that's a little frustrating part. So we are creating jobs, but not as quickly as we would like. And regarding job situation, one sees the decline which was 8 million job losses, and then 7 million job creation. So we are almost back to total number of uh, jobs that were lost. So 8 million loss, 7 million creation. Um, but we have to remember during this time span, uh, there are new college graduates looking for jobs. So we should be not only creating 8 million jobs, but even more than uh, to compensate for that. Uh, local areas. Um, one sees the job growth in the Miami Fort Lauderdale uh, region, which means this is a source of demand. Uh, it is a source or the incentive for household creation uh, in the local region. I mentioned about the frustration of the home builders not able to obtain loans to build. Inventory shortage, yet the builders are not building. I'm glad that you received many information yesterday about new condominium construction uh, here in Miami. You know, those are very important information. Um, but even with those construction, we are still underproducing, underproducing the new units. The banks are not lending, but they have plenty of cash. They're sitting on pile of cash, yet this money is not going to the main street. It's not going to the home builders. And that's the frustrating part that they had a, a downturn during the financial crisis, but their profit level has rebuilt, and their balance sheet is very, very healthy. However, what the banks are uncertain about is new regulations. Many of the Dodd-Frank legislation you may have heard of, heard of uh, is still very complex, and the banks do not know what all the rules of the games are, so they are hesitant. Another part, it could be that there's too many lawsuits that are thrown at the banks. You know, one day there is another $200 million lawsuit, next day $300 lawsuit. With so many lawsuits out there, the banks need to hold additional cash just in case they get sued so that money is not coming to the main street. Now, the interesting thing about lawsuit is that, at least the more recent ones, is that uh, when there is a lawsuit, it's unclear what the lawsuit is about, and the banks they settle, meaning that, okay, you are suing us for $100 million, okay, we'll give you $100 million into the deal. So they don't want to even look at the investigation. So it seemed like you know, we don't even know what the lawsuit was about, and the banks, fearing that their reputation would be damaged if they were to fight the lawsuit, they're just saying, okay, we will just give you the money, uh, and let's call it 
uh, call it off. So uh, right now, the many of the banks are holding on to many of the cash just in case they get uh, hit on the lawsuit. So you know, one may say some of the lawsuits are justified, but one of the bad consequences for the market is that this money is not coming to the main street. The money is not coming for the new home building uh, activity. The forecast that I have, therefore, this is for the nationwide, is that this year it was a good year for practitioners. Sales activity increased, prices increased, so overall dollar volume would have increased about 22% for the practitioners. Next year, sales activity may not increase. Again, 2013 was a good year, so 2014 may be matching 2013 activity, another good year. Not an increase, but matching the good year activity. But the prices will surely rise. Wall Street Journal believe 5%, I think it will be a little higher, 6%. In the local area, I think it will be even higher uh, because of more acute inventory shortage in the Florida market. Uh, so all the business activity increase will be coming from price increases and not from the unit sales increases. We may get more unit sales activity if the housing start expand very rapidly, uh, but the construction loan is still very, very difficult to obtain. Um, top 10 turnaround markets, this is not my, not, not my analysis, this is a, uh, our partner Realtor.com analysis. Uh, they uh, asked me to review uh, their work, so I reviewed it, but I did not participate, and this is what they found in 2013, so this year, uh, in terms of turnaround, whether sales increase rapidly, inventory decline, or prices increase. So these were some of the markets uh, that was shown. One see Fort Lauderdale, Walks Palm Beach. If this was 12, 2012, Miami would have been the leader because Miami is always the leader in South Florida. Then you see Fort Lauderdale, then Walks Palm, uh, West Palm Beach. So Miami is continuing the recovery, but this were the turnaround markets. Now my own analysis for 2014, some of the markets to watch uh, is, uh, uh, these markets. So as you know, global money is coming in, you know, Miami is still, it's probably going to go into a 30 years of recovery, but some of the surprises, I think it's like Rocky Mountain cities of Salt Lake City, uh, Boise, uh, out in the west coast of Seattle or Tucson, I mean, those would be, I think, some of the surprise markets. Charlotte is included. I show you the Charlotte chart, which show no recovery so far in prices, but I think they are primed for recovery uh, because of a strong job growth in that area. Uh, risk to forecast uh, is really coming from Washington, policy changes. You know, Washington, as you know, a lot of dysfunction. Uh, in fact, uh, my family members, you know, we have people from different political spectrum, um, and, and, and one of the family members said, who are all these wackos and weirdos who want to shut down the government? And then I have other family members who say, Let's have government shut down forever. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 but uh, risk is really coming from Washington. You know, I think the shutdown will be damaging in terms of activity, real estate activity. People cannot obtain mortgages, some of the government-backed mortgages. But also some of the new policy changes where they may try to impose higher down payment or trying to take away uh, some of the tax incentives to buy a home uh, and such. Uh, we believe, uh, based on our lobbying and our, what our lobbyists are hearing, that uh, even though these are issues that we are monitoring, we are aggressively fighting, that it will not be implemented, meaning that home buying will continue to increase as long as there is a uh, job creation. Uh, but this will be a major barrier, uh, so it is a risk to consider, but I don't think we, we believe that this risk will not be realized into the marketplace. Um, and uh, furthermore, international buyers, I mean, this is all related to mortgages, but for international buyers, I mean, they're essentially coming in all cash. So they are not even taking out mortgage, so they are not impacted by any changes uh, coming from Washington, uh, broadly speaking. Um, and here's the chart on international transactions. Cash is king. 2013, this year, 84% of all international buyers were purchasing all cash purchasing without taking out a mortgage. Quite amazing. Uh, international uh, clients. We took a survey of realtor members, and we asked the question, uh, what percent of your clients were of international dimension? Meaning that either they are uh, truly international, 
say a German wanting to buy property in Naples as a vacation property, or it was an immigrant, say an uh, immigrant from uh, Ecuador coming to America to live in America, but it is, they still consider themselves to be an Ecuadorian citizen uh, even in the first few years uh, here in the state. So international dimension. So one sees broadly nationwide, which is the red bar, uh, has been very steady, about 28%, you know, one quarter, one third uh, uh, of all buyers. But in the Florida market, very, very high percentage. Uh, even though it did come down uh, a bit uh, in, in recent times. The Florida location, uh, uh, you know, why are people choosing Florida? Because Florida is the dominant uh, location of choice among the international buyers, and they are saying it's a desirable location. Uh, others are saying it's a profitable investment. Um, and I think the combination is probably correct. It's certainly desirable with the uh, ocean nearby. Uh, the uh, temperate climate, uh, but in terms of profitable investment, uh, it has surely turned out that way for the people who have been buying in the past two years, and I think it will continue to be that case uh, for people who are buying this year uh, and next year. Uh, where are the international uh, buyers purchasing within, specifically within some of the Florida markets? Uh, and we see that Miami uh, is the leader. Uh, Orlando does get some uh, activity. Uh, for uh, Lauderdale, uh, then the west side, the Cape Coral, uh, Naples. Uh, and when we uh, looked at the data in the past, we also found that for whatever reasons, Germans like Naples. Brits, Britain, uh, from Britain, uh, British, uh, they like Orlando. But from Latin America, whether Brazil, Colombia, uh, Chile, uh, they prefer Miami, uh, so uh, that's uh, just general uh, dynamics of uh, the Florida markets. And one goes up to, say, Tallahassee or Jacksonville, from foreigners' point of view, uh, they consider that to be Georgia, not even Florida. <laughs> um, the foreign composition, Canadians have been uh, very uh, active. I'm always surprised at this, because if you look at the e economic condition of Venezuela, it's not that healthy. Yet Venezuelans are very uh, rather uh, measurable uh, in the count. So what that tells me is that uh, the Venezuelan economy is shaky. So some of the wealthier among Venezuelans, uh, they want to put their money into a safe location. Um, and hence, they're coming to uh, Miami. Uh, Brazil uh, is active, and then UK has somehow diminished. The UK has very, very much diminished. Maybe it's part of the European recession uh, situation. Uh, Germans have held steady. Uh, China is beginning to show growth. China has been very active in the West Coast. California, uh, Seattle market, very active in the West Coast. But we have been hearing, for example, Chinese investors, institutional investors, are buying 30 properties in Tampa even without looking at it. They are saying, OK, uh, let's go to Florida. It's bargain prices in Florida. Uh, Miami has already recovered. Tampa is a little slow. Let's buy properties in Tampa. And they're doing so even without looking at the property. They're just doing it everything electronically and buying 30 properties uh, to rent it out, get the rental income, but also get the price appreciation as the market recover. Um, so here are some uh, different uh, country uh, dynamics. Now, uh, let's see, in the Miami specifically, so this locality, uh, we did a special survey for uh, Teresa's association. And what we are finding is that Venezuela uh, was number one, Argentina number two, Brazil number three, uh, Colombia number four. Condominiums are the preferred properties, not the single family. And I think one can generally uh, expect this to be the case. Uh, because uh, there's one do not have to worry about maintenance. So, you know, as part of the condominium association fee, uh, uh, that will assure that the property is taken care of, uh, even the time that you are not around. Um, and let me see what this is. Commercial activity. Uh, so, uh, you know, don't consider commercial as something non-relevant for international buyers. Uh, from international buyers, they're also uh, interested in commercial. I mean, there are many people who are not doing any transactions, but you still have 30 to 40 percent 
uh, realtors who are involved in commercial transactions with international clients. They may buy rental property for their rental income, remember the Chinese investors, but why buy a multifamily apartment or rental property? You can buy retail space and get rental income. You can buy industrial space, you can get rental income. Industrial space, I think the demand will be rising as soon as the Panama Canal widens. And once uh, that happens, many of the Chinese products, because they increase uh, international trade, will use the uh, Panama Canal to come over here, which also means uh, that economic growth potential is better uh, getting the Chinese exposure, but furthermore, because of the Panama connection to Miami, you may see more uh, activity among some of the people living in Miami needing to work in Panama, people living in Panama needing to work uh, in Miami, so you may get more uh, demand for real estate due to the job situation uh, between the countries. So don't uh, consider, don't leave out commercial in part of the investment considerations. Uh, let's see, and within the investment consideration, so far it's been primarily multifamily, uh, but one can see that you know, some people are interested in office rents, industrial rents, uh, retail rents. How do people get international clients? I think number one and number two is the dominant, through friends and previous contacts and clients. Serve your client well, and they will find another client for you. And also network, it is critical because uh, even though uh, by chance in Britain you are working with somebody from um, uh, say embassy in Ecuador in Britain and you happen to know friend or friend and friend and then suddenly before you know it uh, that uh, ambassador or person who is working in uh, Ecuadorian embassy in Britain uh, may want to buy property in the U.S. and you know through that uh, referral network as to how you want to refer that property or that connection over. So uh, it's all through relationship. Online is becoming more prevalent in terms of initial search. You know, everyone goes to the internet sites, search homes, find it, but in terms of actual transaction, actual transaction, it requires people. This is a business opportunity for you. I'm blown away. How many of the realtors worked with international prospects, yet they did not close the deal because something did not happen? So they spent time in trying to get the deal done, but 71% of realtors have had an experience where they were working with international clients but the deal did not come through. And you say, wow, you know, that's a large number of uh, non-deals, but it is also a possibility of maybe they're not getting the deal done because they're not getting that excitement or showing the right property. So this is an opportunity to bring this figure lower, which means that you, know, you are getting more uh, closings done. And one of the primary reasons why the deals are not getting done is that because they are saying they cannot find the right property. So as a realtor, find that right property. If you don't know, find the right connection with other realtors to get that property. And once you have that, then you can get the uh, deal done. And uh, finally, I think uh, I'm almost close to my uh, end of my presentation. Uh, exchange rates, people are saying, is important consideration for clients. You know, they're looking at the purchasing power. And recently, uh, the dollar has weakened. Dollar has begun to weaken a bit, uh, which means that from international buyers, uh, they can leverage their purchasing power longer distance now than before. The, even the euro has strengthened against the dollar. Chinese yuan has strengthened against the dollar. Um, and uh, many other currencies have begun to strengthen against the dollar, which means that there's even better uh, buying power from foreigners for the U.S. property. So with that, uh, thank you very much. I have some staff back at home. They're always analyzing various economic data. So this is another way to follow. Follow the Miami uh, area Association of Realtors, many good information for the local area, you know, for some of the national trend or the you know, national things like interest rate, uh, you can try to uh, follow our uh, staff back home. So thank you for your patience and thank you very much. <laughs>